Don't mind me. I'm Andrew Rhodes. See, I'm the voice that's usually on the other end of the microphone. See this thing here? Yeah. I'm usually the voice on the other end of that when you're listening to the absolutely completely random podcast. You know, it's ironic. It'll be five years. By the time this video comes out, it'll be five years that I've been doing this podcast. Five. I didn't think it was possible either. Hell, I thought I would have given it up after one. But five years. I started this in 2016 after watching and yeah, I don't know, after watching and listening to the CU podcast run by Pat Contry and Ian Ferguson. And honestly, I thought I can do this. I have a microphone. Because I used to put comedy up on YouTube. I have a microphone. I have a laptop. I could do this. So I set out and I started. And when I originally started, I started on SoundCloud. And then after my fourth week, I realized that's not a viable option anymore because SoundCloud removes, removed the first one, <laughs> bastards, they removed the first one because, quote the devil, <laughs> it uh, was now too long because you only get three hours for free on SoundCloud, which makes sense. SoundCloud's mostly used for, quote, uh, up and coming musicians. So of course, three hours would be perfect for them. Now, you could have gotten more, but again, since I don't make anything doing this video series, it really wouldn't be worth the time and effort to pay $20 a month for absolutely positively nothing when my finances were already zip and nil back then already. But five years. To commemorate this five-year event, I have decided to do something special. See this list? Of course you don't. See this list? Yeah, that's right. This list is a list of topics that I have had the most fun doing over the last five years. Now, I would have said these were from viewers like you and thanking you for it, but unfortunately, nobody out there gave me any actual topics. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. I know. A podcast that runs for about an hour and gets nothing. Hmm. Well, I'm not like the nerd cast that uh, talks about Doctor Who and a lot of other science fiction stuff, so it makes sense that people don't like me that much. But anyway, I decided to do something nice. So, I'm going to basically allow you to revisit these six topics. Six. I'm going to allow you to revisit them with a little fresh coat of paint put onto them. No, you're not going to be seeing my lovely face while talking about these. I still have the audio recordings for these. And I'm going to allow you to relive this for the podcast's five-year anniversary special. That's right. This is the absolutely, completely random podcast five-year anniversary special. Enjoy. You know, one of the first things that I always loved, aside from YouTube at the time and anime, is robots. So how excited was I when this Megabots whole thing was announced? I was ecstatic. I loved it. I looked forward to it. And then the video dropped. And so did my expectations. No, no, seriously. When you basically made me envy the deaf and the blind by watching two robots beat the crap out of each other, that's bad. Hell, this made BattleBots and that UK equivalent cry oil. And you had the audacity to think that this was going to become a massive thing? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. But no. So the first video that we... Well, sorry. Not video. The first clip that we can go back into is from 2017. Wow. Yeah. Believe it or not, none of the 2016 stuff made the list. I'm actually not joking. Not not a thing made the list, the 2016. I guess I got better with time, but no, nah, oh well. Yeah, I'm going back to talk about Megabots. The Mega Letdown. So I'm not really ever disappointed with stuff when it comes to uh, YouTube. But this was something horrible. And the Megabots battle, to me, was bad. Not so much for the fact that you had so much hype built up for this. 
so much intensity going into this that you're thinking, okay, this is going to be the sport of sports, the wave of the future. And what you got was nothing like what it was hyping itself up to be. So what exactly happened to make this so bad? Well, uh, they finally duked it out this past Tuesday. Uh, it was at 7 p.m. Pacific time, which was 10 o'clock my time. I didn't get a chance to watch it until Thursday. Because it dawned on me, oh crap, I can pull it up on their YouTube channel. And then I finally got around to doing it. And it's just, I'm watching this and I'm going, okay, I saw a couple articles about how bad it was. And it's like, this is just really, I, I wanted to see if it was accurate. And those articles weren't even doing it justice for how bad it was. Now, first off, I can't really blame... The fighters, I can't blame the environment for this because it, this wasn't going to be something like BattleBots where they're small, they're remote controlled, they have enough power to zoom around the little arena. It wasn't going to be anything like that. The camera angles in this were crappy. It was almost like somebody was shooting this as like a Blair Witch Project to a point where like you're getting point of view shots that are shaky you're seeing inside the cockpit every now and then. And the main bulk of it was basically just them. You're seeing it like an overhead shot, almost like they're on a freaking either a boom lift or they're just using a goddamn drone to view this fight. And it was just horrible. It was horrendous. Uh, it was basically two rounds or two different fights. Uh, the first one, the Japanese team took on the Model 1 version that uh, the Megabots team came up with and just destroyed it. And they just like rammed it and that was the end of it. Okay, cool. We saw what the bots made of. Works for us. Round 2 is where it started getting uh, really stupid. So it starts off with Eagle Prime, which was the US bot, just shooting... Tennis balls. And it's shooting tennis balls out of this makeshift cannon on its left arm. And the Japanese bot, which is basically already shown that it's got speed and maneuverability. At least over its opponent at this point, anyway. Hides behind some barrels. And they're just taking pot shots at it. It's like, okay, come on. People are watching this. People have been invested in this, wanting to see what's going to happen. Been following you people. And this is what you link to the barn with. I mean, it was horrible. And then there are people under the comments section in the YouTube video going, well, it's scripted and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I can definitely say that. Because out of the whole 26-minute thing, the whole 26-minute video, the best part was around the 22-minute mark. When the two bots are apparently having a pushing contest, trying to see which one of them is going to submit first, they basically try to go into the announcer's booth, which, by the way, they destroy. And you have Mike Goldberg, who's there announcing all this, who is honestly just looking like he's there for the freaking paycheck. Like, okay, I'm going to be as happy and excited about this. You know what? Screw it. I'm getting paid for this. I I'm just going to – I'm going to phone this stuff in. And that's – honest to God, that's what it felt like he did. This was not a match that you would expect. There was no real pressure for anything. There was no real ampness, no ingenuity for this. This was a joke. And it was a joke that, unfortunately, was not funny. Don't, don't get me wrong. I was looking forward to this. I was singing this thing's praise. Thing. Okay, this is going to be really cool, the wave of the future. And I understand that, okay, they're not going to move fluidly. But they could have moved at least a little bit more like freaking excavators move. If you've ever seen any video or seen a construction site that has one of those big ass excavators, even a backhoe, you'll know what I mean by this. But the excavator can move the whole portion of its upper section above the caterpillar treads really fluidly depending on who's piloting it. So you have the rich people who built this damn bot piloting it. At least the two owners of the company, if memory serves correctly for who was piloting this damn thing. And they're moving it like it's some freaking remote control car or remote control tank. It, it, this was a joke upon a joke. And it just wasn't funny. 
But the second round, uh, the second part of the second round, I should say, because they had to stop it halfway through because the two bots got stuck on each other. So they had to break them apart. They had to repair the. They had to swap out the uh, cannon arm because I'm guessing either I, I'm guessing they ran out of ammo. So the second round starts. The second half of the second round starts off with them coming out. Uh, the Japanese team just starts shooting them with paintballs. And you could hear the one pilot on Eagle Prime uh, just going, Are they shooting us with paintballs? No, moron. They're shooting you with live-ass ammunition in the middle of a goddamn steel mill in Japan with witnesses that could easily get hit by ricochet. Sure, what the hell? They're shooting you with paintballs, moron. Come on. Like I said, th this had so much hype built up to it. So much uh, ingenuity. So much was going into this, and it did not live up to what it was selling. It wrote those trailers and the articles that they were write that were coming out about this, everything that was leading up to this was writing a check that these two bots. Hell, I can even say it. these three bots just did not even come close to cashing. And the comments in the YouTube video were ripping them asunder. And for good reason, too. Because you had the entire... Oh God, it was just so bad. You had the entirety of the YouTube community going, it's scripted. You could tell it was scripted. And there are people going, how is it scripted? Explain to me how it's scripted. Oh, you can tell it was scripted. Oh, we conveniently pull off a freaking metal bar and start spinning it around in our hands and start blocking your shots. Seriously? Oh, we're just going to crash into the announcer's booth. But Mike Goldberg's sitting there like he's like he's reading off a script or had the script memorized. Because at the one point, uh, the lady that was next to him, who was the robotics expert, she goes, I don't think we should be here anymore. And he goes, why? You're the robotics expert. It's like, that line had no correlation to what she was talking about. There was no... Th that line and what she was saying are so far apart from each other, you could drive an entire space shuttle, the, Enter the Starship Enterprise. Hell, you could even get the entire planet of Atlantis and Jupiter through that chasm. For how those two lines are so separate from one another. So it's like he was reading off a script and had it memorized, but she went off script because, okay, this is getting a little dangerous in my opinion. I think we should move. Then he finally comes up with the, oh, shit, I think we should move. And they kind of jump off. But then it's like they stopped the fight and they told him to start up back up again so they could push it in because all of a sudden you have the camera angle change. Uh, they take out the announcer booth, and it was just, it was a haphazard it was a gigantic nightmare. A waste of time, money, and everything. And these people had the audacity to make this. And you had, uh, like I said, you had Mike Goldberg was announcing this. And he was so hyped up in the beginning. He's trying to build up so much more steam for this. I think he knew this was going to be bad. And like I said, you could just tell it in the way he was saying this stuff. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and they tell... Oh, Oh, well, Eagle Prime's bringing out the chainsaw, and it's just going down. You can just tell how he was saying it. It's like, oh, God, this is horrible. This is, like, god-awful bad. And they want to have this become a new sport. No. no. Now that you actually see it, I don't see this picking up. I mean, the whole controlling the robot thing, that's cool. The fact that they moved so sluggishly... And they had plenty of time to build this stuff. And that's what bothers me. It moves so slowly, so sluggishly. The fight was un really unbelievable. It was unrealistic. You had this giant, towering, massive bot taking on this little pathetic excuse for a bot at this point. And then they're going, okay, it's good. It's, uh, yeah. The Japanese team, at the one point in the first half of the second round, starts moving forward and advancing on them. They go, let's push a car in front of them. Oh, sure. That's going to stop it. So we're just going to push one of the conveniently placed cars in its pathway to block. Come on. Honestly, I actually get more realistic robot fighting out of an app that I've been playing on my tablet than that, would get, than that show even gave me. 
That, as I said, was a pathetic excuse for everything imaginable. And it just got so bad and so worse as it dragged on. And you're thinking, well, it wasn't that bad. It was only the first outing. Yeah, but it's the first outing that would eventually make the entire sport what it would be. And that is the problem. It's not so much the fact that it itself was bad in the hindsight. It's that they're trying to make a sport out of this. So if it's boring to watch the very first one, how is this going to be more exciting putting them in like a stadium and having them beat the crap out of each other then? And they never even destroyed either of the bots. And the one person goes, well, yeah, they cost a couple million dollars a piece. They're building them to destroy each other. They're building them to beat the crap out of one another. They're going to take some damage. But yet, what was breaking off of each bot was, honest to God, it looked like fiberglass or some type of really chintzy plastic that you would just put on for the hell of it. Sort of like what you have on a car, like the frame and the body of a car. And that's, honest to God, what some of those coating and some of the outer covering on those parts looked like. None of the main metal parts seemed like they were breaking at all. But it was just so much of a train wreck, so much of a travesty for what they were selling, what they were pitching. I, I just, I, I, could, I felt horrible watching this. I honestly just wanted to automatically go, okay, I want my time back. I want my 26 minutes back that you've robbed from me. And you had all those people that were doing this that were so happy and so, you know, living it up. Like, like I said, Mike, Mike Goldberg, uh, the name of the girl that was next to him escapes me. He had Mari Takahashi, who was down in the, pretty sure she was the one that was down in like the prepping areas, talking with the teens. But everything could be summed up if you actually managed to sit through this train wreck. Everything could be summed up just perfectly. By the look on the Japanese pilot's face at the end when they lost. The look on his face was like, okay, this was a joke. It, it, th this was a waste of my goddamn time. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I agree with you. I mean, the only person that's really gotten anything out of this is Mike Goldberg. Because he obviously got paid. And then you have the multitude of people who, and I'm going to quote... Um, I'm going to say it like this, because this is the only way I can I can think of how this would actually be accurate. The magnitude of people that got their dicks hard from this, that were just enjoying this so much. It's like, yeah, this is what robot fighting should be. BattleBots is more entertaining than this. At least in BattleBots, they're small. They can beat the crap out of each other. They can destroy it. Not a problem. You want to pilot them? Oh, that's not a problem. Well, we can't destroy them, and the fights are going to seem fixed like wrestling. They're going to be scripted like the WWE. And for those of you out there that are about to bash me in the comments, it's staged. Come off it. There's been articles have been proven about it. Former wrestlers have come out and said it was staged. Deal with it. Okay, the curtain's been lifted. The entirety of this, though, like I said, it's it was a joke. It was a goddamn joke, and it just wasn't a funny one. It was one of those, you're sad that they actually went through with this thinking, why did you do this? Why did you honestly come up with this concept and go through with this? I don't know. This is supposed to take off again. Uh, the winner of that match was suppo is supposed to take on the Iron Kong uh, that China was building. Uh, so, I, so since uh, America won... Uh, it'll be Megabot's Eagle Prime will be taking on the Iron Kong from China. I honestly hope the next one doesn't even get viewed. I, I honestly hope it just stops. I mean, you're going to get the ones that are going to get their dicks hard from this, that are going to enjoy this, that this is the only way they can get it chubby. And you're going to get the odd curiosity seekers that are going to want to know, okay, is it going to lose? But as far as anybody else, they're not going to pay too... They're not going to pay attention to this anymore. The... the how this match went is officially how this entire sport for them is going to go. Right down the toilet. 
because it was just that it, it was bad. If you don't believe me, you can easily pull it up. Check it out on the Megabots YouTube channel. It's up there, first video, right on their main channel. It's their battle. Like I said, they hyped this up way too much. They didn't give it, they gave it way too much leg room and said, this is going to be what it is. And it did not live up to what the hype was. It, it failed miserably for the hype. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a cynical person. Maybe I'm just, you know, an intelligent person and this, I didn't find this appealing. But when it comes to robot stuff, I love robotic stuff. So this. I was looking forward to it. I will admit that. I was looking forward to this. I've said it multiple times in other podcast episodes. I've been looking forward to this. The fact that it sucked this bad just hurts on so many levels that I just can't even imagine it anymore. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I don't know. But it, it was bad. It was really bad. I really feel sorry for the Japanese team that lost. I would congratulate the American team, but let's face it. That was a train wreck of a travesty that you participated in. I I'm sorry. I, I, I can't get behind this. If that's what it the fights are going to be like. They're going to be scripted like that. You can tell that they're fake. The camera angles suck. And th the worst part was, at the one point in the first half of it, they're literally throwing a drone out there. And the one's like, oh, we're just going to swat it with our hand and take it out. It's like, what the hell are you even caring about the damn drone buzzing around that came up from behind the other robot? You got to whack it and it gets it right on the freaking visor of the robot that's whacking it off, which was the Eagle Prime bot. It just whacks it with its claw arm and knocks it right into the freaking visor and it starts smoking. He's like, brilliant, morons. You should have just left it alone. What was it going to do? It didn't have any arms. It didn't have any weapons. It was a damn drone. Let it go. It, it, it was a joke. I, I, it was an embarrassment to watch as a robotics fan, a fan of battle bots and stuff like that. That was, honest to God, it was a train wreck. It was a travesty to watch it, and I regret spending the 26 minutes invested in it. But if you want to see how bad it was for yourself, I... Check it out online. I, I can't say I recommend this. Unless you want something to say how bad or horrible, I, I don't recommend this at all. But if you want to see it, it's up on their YouTube channel. You can easily find it. It's very easy to find. Check it out if you want to. I personally wouldn't do it, but go ahead. But that, that was horrible. It really was horrible. God, was it so bad. <laughs> that was fun, huh? Well, all right, all right, all right. I know it wasn't the world's greatest, but even then. But still, the next one, though, is going to be a lot more fun. Because this is something that I always love. Now, I will never deny that I will stand up for any YouTuber that is ever in harm's way. I had to be a guy in trouble once already, but still, nonetheless, I will stand up for people. And Guru Larry has my utmost respect. Mostly because he's a successful YouTuber and I kind of envy him. But for the fact... That he danced with WatchMojo.com and came out beautifully smelling on the other side. That's right. Because we got to remember this. Again, back in 2017. Wow, holy shit. Yes, that's right. Back in 2017, Guru Larry took on WatchMojo.com because they did theft, I mean research, of some of his... Well, literally, just put it this way. They literally just stole the stuff right off of his one video and claimed it as research. And then decided to throw a royal fit because he admitted he put traps in it to catch people from doing just that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going there. So enjoy. All right, everybody. It's the moment you've been waiting for. That's right. I made you wait to the very end of the podcast because I'm going to talk about Larry Bundy Jr. and Watch Mojo. But let's do this right, folks. We got to do this right. So let's do this like a boxing match. In this corner, the undisputed king of fact hunt. Larry Bundy Jr., a.k.a. Guru Larry. And in the opposite corner, 
the undisputed king of top 10 lists, ranting and raving about stupid stuff, and annoyer of many, many people who think that their content is bullshit, <clears throat> WatchMojo.com! I'm Andrew Rose, and I will be your ringside announcer for tonight's match. Larry versus Mojo, tonight on Super Slam. At least that's what I want to say. But anyway. <laughs> so here's the concept. This is what happened. And uh, I'm going to try to do this as nicely as I can. I want to try to stay as neutral as I can. But I kind of have to agree with, Larry, with Guru Larry on this one. And I really apologize for that, but I have to. So here's what happened. Wednesday night, or sometime Wednesday, WatchMojo.com released the video, top 10, and I had it written down. What did I do with it? Oh, wait, hold on. I remember what I did with it. I remember where I put it. If I can just get it out of my bag here. And no, I don't have the Mary Poppins bag. I have a... I just... No, that's not it. I just threw everything inside in one bag here, and I'm kind of regretting it. Okay, I know I had it around here somewhere. Okay, well, anyway, they released a top ten list. It was, like, worst-selling consoles. And the whole thing was... It was consoles that were... Really, what you want to call uh, stinkers on the open market. I mean, we're talking consoles that didn't sell very well, consoles that didn't do very well in the end market. People didn't like them. They didn't want anything to do with them. So that was that. And as I'm watching this on Wednesday night, I'm thinking to myself, I've heard this information somewhere before. It just wasn't dawning on me where I had heard it from. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, I've really heard this somewhere before. I mean, it was like recent that I've heard this. It just wasn't dawning on me where I heard it from. So let's fast forward a little bit now to Thursday morning. I'm awake. I'm going on to Twitter. And Larry Bundy Jr., great person, by the way. Highly recommend you check out his YouTube channel. He's really funny when he does some of these fact on videos. He's got a raging hate boner for Peter Molyneux, but definitely does it in a funny way. But anyway, he posts up on Twitter, what a great way to wake up in the morning, finding out WatchMojo.com stole all my research for a top 10 video. Then it clicks in my head. That's where I heard it from. Because the whole time I'm watching this video, I'm like, I remember hearing about this. It was like the ZX Spectrum. The Apple Pippin. I'm like, I remember hearing this somewhere else. I'm like, where the hell did I hear this from? And when I read his thing, I'm like, that's where it was. It was a fact hunt video. Now I remember it. So, Larry does, so Guru Larry does the ultimate thing. First off, I would buy you a sandwich or a slice of pizza or anything. I, hell, I'd buy you a beer. Because I think you deserve one. You basically, you sir deserve a, a toast. Because you took on a big corp, a big freaking channel and lived to tell the tale. So here's what happened. He complains about it, uploads a shit ton of comments on their thing. Other people are putting comments up. You stole Guru Larry stuff. You stole Fact Hunt. You thieves. WatchMojo.com's claiming it's... <laughs> Research? Yeah, it's a new type of research. Five-figure discount type. But anyway, so they're basically claiming that it's research, that they source it from multiple sites. It was one of their 100 freelancers that kind of screwed up, that they have stuff in place to check all this. But they asked, because then Guru Larry goes, well, luckily I put traps in my videos, and I put traps in my research to catch people who try to use it and publish it online as their own. First off, that's a good idea. I mean, there are a lot of people that would write stories online that they'll omit like one or two letters in a word. Or they'll change up a word. Because your mind 
will read the word. If it's the first and last letter or a normal word and you're reading the sentence, your mind will instantly tell you what that word is. Even It could be complete garbage in between. If the first and last letter are the same and it's going in the order of a sentence, your mind's instantly going to figure out what that word is by repetition. And you're just going to see that. And a lot of people don't think about that when they're looking up like articles and stuff like that. Somebody will put something like that in because your mind will instantly change it up. So they'll do traps like that to make it so that, oh yeah, this is mine. Well, how can you prove it? Line 16, 27, 95, I added extra words in. These lines here, I changed the words. These lines here, only the first and last letter of, this, of the word are correct. The rest of it in the middle is basically, is basically garbage. And that's what it is. So what Guru Larry did was he basically falsified some of the information or exaggerated it a bit to catch people which is fine because you figure you actually have down in your description you know fact hunt you know all this stuff what it is and it's usually a common case of okay not all the information can be 100% accurate because you're scouring the internet to find it to begin with you're looking up old like information that and you want to make sure that you have somebody that something that grabs their attention and it's usually like stuff like I'd say like in the middle something that's not like a major one at least from what I could tell so watchmojo.com wanted to have some examples of these traps to as I put it in a reply uh, they wanted it for two reasons at least this is my this was my reply to a Guru Larry's Twitter post. He goes, they want some examples. I'm like, oh, there's two things with this. One, they want proof. Two, they want to know what to look for the next time they do theft. I mean research, as they call it. It was flat out theft. So he showed them, he sent them some examples, and they replied with the following. Now this letter is was made available via, <coughs> via Guru Larry on his Twitter page. Uh, Top Hack Gaming, Top Hack Gamer, uh, read the letter. I'm gonna read the letter, because this is hilarious as hell. Sit back, folks, and relax. This is gonna get good. The official response, uh, which will post on their videos, on our video and your channel, as well for full transparency. So you definitely can see this out there. This is to Larry Bundy. So this is definitely what happened. I'm going to read this, and I quote. I will stop in periodically to explain my thoughts, but I will read it. So, here we go. Hi, Larry. Ash here. You emailed us at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we replied by 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Before even noticing these comments on your and our channel. We have published 13,000 videos since 2006. It's now currently 2017. That is pretty bad. Early on, we were a group of five people producing videos. Today, we are 60 plus full timers and 100 plus freelancers. Our team hails from journalism and communication programs trained to avoid plagiarizing. And despite what some of the critics may say, we avoid clickbait. Let's pause here for a moment. Bullshit! Bull My bullshit meter is busting already. It's just overloading. Bullshit's over. It's over 9,000. My God, the bullshit's over 9,000. You avoid clickbait? My ass, you do. You avoid clickbait. <laughs> Continuing, they try to adhere. I say, I'm sorry. Let's see. Uh, they avoid clickbait and try to adhere to lofty standards when it comes to infotainment. When did that become a fucking word? Seriously. Uh, when we tackle some topics that are of interest to younger audiences, like gaming, it's possible that the writer is less knowledgeable. In journalism practices. You gotta be kidding me, right? 
Over the years, our team of editors fact check and proofread scripts methodically to avoid plagiarism. We have developed tools that filter these quite well. In those cases, we go back to the writers and educate them and whatnot. So in other words, you go back to the writers and tell them, you can't do this, and you're bitch slapping them. Oh, that's educating them, all right. The tools that filter this, yeah, bullshit on all that crap. This is starting to sound like the company line. Let's keep going, though. There's still more, and I'm having fun all the way. We also tend to use, on average, 10 plus sources for some topics that are more niche. We may only use two to three. Here, in the spirit of full transparency, we had two, and one was yours. As your source was a video, our tools didn't do a good job of picking up on the similarities. In the hours since you reached out, we have implemented steps now to better filter video transcripts as well. So let's just basically think what that says. Uh, see, since Guru Larry contacted them, they figured out a way to steal and not get caught. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. We have practically never taken down a video. When we make an honest, factual mistake, we generally add a note and chalk it up to the fact that our aim is to please our 15 million subscribers. Yeah. You know, if I'd ever come up with something and I screwed up, I would definitely want to make sure my 11 subscribers, not million, 11, just double digit, 11 subscribers, at least had the right information and not full bullshit. We cover a lot of topics, and mistakes are part of the game. We publish 200 lists, meaning 2,000 topics. What the hell kind of math is that? We publish 2,000 lists, meaning 2,000 topics, or 200 lists, meaning 2,000 topics. Yeah, but some of your lists aren't top 10s. There are top 5 lists that you morons do. And so you're lumping them in, that's going to take your total to less or more than 2,000. We generally have not had any problems with plagiarism. <laughs> We take seriously, and truth be told, we think you have a valid complaint here. So we do apologize about that. If that were the only... We're getting into the good seat now, folks! Grab your Crocs and hike up your socks! We're about to get wet on this ride. The only issue, I'd ask you if you would be fine with us leaving the video up and crediting you with links, etc. So first off, truth be told, we think you have a valid complaint here. So, what, you didn't think you had a valid complaint before you got caught red-handed or after you caught got caught red-handed? Or when you were stealing the shit? Did it ever occur to you, you know, he might see this video, somebody might bring this to his attention, now, nah, we don't gotta worry about that shit. We'll just pop it up on YouTube. No one will notice. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, I can add a little bit onto this yet. I actually have a WatchMojo.com account. Because I actually try to come up with some ideas for top 10 lists. And here's the thing. With some of those lists... You can add notes to somebody else's list. So, like, let's say somebody has top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh cards or top 10 Pokemon episodes or top 10 stupidest things you've ever seen on YouTube. You can have notes in there. Those notes usually inquire people saying, oh, yeah, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. There's your research, morons. But, we're getting into the good stuff. So now we're into the second part of the letter here. So we're still on the email yet, which by the way, I will have a picture of this up. It's already been out there. This is so much fun right now. So, however, upon reflection, while we think it's a clever idea 
on the one hand, for you to include falsehoods in your videos, I simply cannot, I simply, I am simply not comfortable with knowingly publishing falsehoods, or as some would call it, fake news. So, mainly that, so mainly for that reason, we have taken the video down. We may tackle the topic again in the future. You're not comfortable putting up fake news. Your moronic group of morons actually did a fake video for April Fool's Day telling people that WatchMojo.com was done. Try again, asswipes. I know for a fact you're full of BS and you're trying to spread it. My portable BS meter's going off like crazy. My big one's overloaded. <laughs> Had you not included false information in your video, we would have likely just acknowledged your complaint, apologized, and we are apologizing regardless, to be clear, included a credit and link to your video in the video via annotation. Which, first off, YouTube doesn't do anymore! They stopped doing annotations in May, assholes. You should have known this. If you're as big of a company as you claim to be, you should have known that. So this is basically a BS company line. We already printed it out, insert time and stuff here. This wasn't handmade, because annotations aren't a part of YouTube anymore. In the comments section and in description, but largely due to the fact that you acknowledge publishing false info, we have decided to take down the video. Really? I'm wondering if the other person whose information you researched, I mean stole, let's get it right here. I'm sorry that you stole, I mean researched from, basically caught your ass red-handed too. And that's two, count them two screw-ups. Ah, 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 the count from Sesame Street would be having a field day with how many screw-ups you people have made on this one. Oh God, I'm having a blast with this and I'm not even done with the letter yet. Side note, here we go folks, this is where it's gonna get good. In case you are wondering, we used, we used to cite slash list sources, but early on we realized that a lot of the information on the internet was not really actively original, but all rooted back to similar sources, and that led to people coming to us complaining that we were sourcing someone who had in fact taken content from them. Well, let's see, if you search Wikipedia for stuff, 90% of that's taken from other sites because it's a an encyclopedia site! Oh, I'm loving this. This gets better and better. Let's see. But upon further research, we discover that the complaining party wasn't even the original source of that info. And they had, in fact, gotten the info from someone else. As our research comes from countless, from countless of sources, and I'm not kidding, that's exactly what it says in here. On top of the research slash writers learning over the years, that is why we generally don't list sources, FYI. No, 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 you don't list sources so that they can't come after you and go, You stole my shit, you bastards! I'm gonna sue your ass! That's why you don't do it! That's why you don't list your sources. Oh, we don't list sources because people will come after us and say that it was taken from somebody else and they weren't even the original person that's telling us this. That's why we don't list sources because of our researchers and writers' learnings over the years and everything else. Bullshit! You do it so you don't get fing caught! That's why you do it! All to say. Thank you for contacting, apologies for the grief it may have caused you, it was a sincere and honest mistake. <laughs> That's good. That chalks up to our need to better train our team and, in capital letters, implement filters for sources when they are video based. But, 
as a friendly suggestion, I would avoid publishing false info in your videos. The web is already full of that. Long term, your channel will be will fare better if you avoid that. But to each their own. Regards and good luck with your channel. Ombudsman Ash. So in other words, don't put falsities in your videos. It makes it harder for us to steal them. If you don't put falsities in them, we can steal it and claim it as our own. That's like leaving your front door unlocked and saying, come on in, steal my TV. Or better yet, come on in, steal my couch, take my toilet, take my food. I'll just leave the front door unlocked. All the thieves in the neighborhood can come in. What the hell are these people thinking? I mean, for the love of God, you have the audacity. You have. I said it best on Twitter, balls as big as church bells, to basically flip the blame on the Guru Larry and go, oh, well, it's your fault we had to take down the video because you put false information in and that screwed up our theft, I mean our research, because of it. No, 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 no. You assholes at Watch Mojo got caught with your hand in the cookie jar, with your pants down, and you got nailed for it. That's what it was. But you don't want to accept it. You don't want to take it like a man. No, no, no. It's not our fault, you claim. No, 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 no. It's their fault. Because it was false information that they had in there. We don't publish fake news. We ain't BuzzFeed. No. We're WatchMojo.com. Where people come and give us stupid suggestions for videos. And then we never make them anyway. We published 13,000 videos since 2006. <laughs> what, what the hell have you been doing for 11 years? My God! 11 years and you published 13,000 videos? I mean, seriously? Seriously, how? How can you function? And you... <laughs> And you have the audacity to steal from more successful channels than you. You ain't Robin Hood, damn it. You're what? You're WatchMojo.com, assholes of the world. And that makes me sad to say that because I used to like your top 10 videos, but now I'm wondering how many more people you stole from that claim it to be research. I mean, were any of those anime ones actually yours or did you just take it from Crunchyroll? I mean, come on. Don't put falsities in your videos. The web is full of that, and your channel will fare better in the long run. He's got more subscribers than you morons will ever have! <laughs> and you have the audacity! <laughs> I just. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I'm suggestion. I got a friendly suggestion for you, Watch Mojo. You ready for this? Actually, practice what you preach and have somebody check everything. Oh, was this in a video somewhere? Oh, no. Okay, let's put it up. You stole my shit. Our fact checker checked it. <laughs> friendly suggestion, you assholes. I mean, seriously. You would avoid publishing false info in your videos. You published a video claiming that you guys were wrapping up WatchMojo.com because you were out of ideas. And it was an April Fool's Day prank, but that's still fake news. And you... I know it's possible to die laughing and I'm liable to from this because I can't stop. This is funny as hell. So you're most... They're mostly pissed because... Guru Larry put in traps to incriminate and basically catch anyone red-handed from stealing his research. And watch Mojo's piss because they had to yank down a video because they screwed up. 
Well, yeah, you had your hand caught in the cookie jar. And you try to give it an innocent look like, I didn't touch the cookies. No, you touched the cookies. Your handprint's all over the cookies. You screwed up, kid. I mean, seriously. I don't like that. I, I just get a kick out of this. The, the, the best part had to be, and truth be told, we think you have a valid complaint here. Yeah, because every single one of his fans started ripping you guys a new asshole. Every single one. Hell, if I would have figured it out Wednesday night, I would have started it. I didn't even check the comment section on that video before you yanked it off. I would have loved to have read some of those. You guys are never going to walk away from this. This is literally going to be the the start of the downfall of WatchMojo.com. Because I honestly hope that many more people take a close look at your videos and go, Sons of bitches stole that from me! And claimed in his research, research my ass! The many sources that you only have two for top ten worst video game consoles. You... You... <laughs> I just... I just can't... You only had two sources? Oh, come on, any decent journalist has more than two sources. They at least get three to five, you morons. I like that. And to be clear, we are apologizing regardless. Well, yeah, we don't want you coming and suing us in real life. We're apologizing. We're sorry. We're making amends. Please make this go away. <laughs> The problem is, is that the die has been cast, the movie finger is ricked, and you assholes have basically strung your own cord to hang yourselves with. You didn't even leave yourself enough rope to save your lives on this one. You screwed yourselves to the wall when you basically said, we don't steal any research, we don't steal anybody's content, it's research. Yeah, that's five-finger discount research there. <laughs> I mean, we're talking flat out five-finger discount. Hey, I need, hey, you know what? I need to do a top ten list. Hey, uh, Guru Larry, if you're listening to this, mind if I borrow some of your stuff? I'll claim it as research. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. I don't do top ten lists. There's too much work involved in that. But seriously, I mean, come on. To actually come out and try to turn the whole thing around on him. It's just freaking, you, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, we're just gonna blame Guru Larry. It's your fault because you put traps in your video. No, it's Watch Mojo's fault because you people were too stupid to actually fact check a goddamn video. Oh, well, we're publishing. So we're adding to our 13,000 videos that we made in 11 years. You know, we gotta make our, well, how many did you say, 15 million subscribers happy? They, on average, use 10 plus sources. Yeah, so how many YouTube channels do you go to to look up information? Oh, God, I just, oh. Oh. So anyway, uh, Guru Larry, I definitely, uh, if I ever meet you in real life, if you drink beer or something, I'll buy you a beer. If you drink soda, I'll buy you a soda. I'll buy you a sandwich or a slice of pizza. I don't care. You deserve it. You took on WatchMojo.com and came out smelling like roses on the other side. I can't even begin to fathom how great that was. You took them on and lived to tell the tale, my friend. Oh, I need... oh. <sighs> you know, I have to admit, aside from YouTube and my part-time job, eBay has been one of my few loves in life. Yes, yeah, okay, it's a very love-hate relationship. It loves my money. I hate the fact that I spend money there, but nonetheless, I digress. But still, YouTube and I have one thing in common with the rest of the world. 
eBay plays an important role in a lot of our stuff. I mean, my camera, my tripod, my microphone, all of this came from eBay. And if it wouldn't have been for that, I wouldn't have been able to get my YouTube stuff going. I mean, come on. So, of course, how did I feel about YouTube changing their policy up on things again? Well, not exactly too thrilled, but more so for the fact that it seemed to be once again targeting us anime fans. That's right, YouTube just decided, hey, we don't care what you think. I'm sorry, I shouldn't keep saying YouTube, it's eBay. eBay figured, we don't care what you think. Well, YouTube doesn't either, but that's beside the point. eBay's like, we don't care if you like anime. It's porn to us. It ain't allowed on here. And eBay's policy change took effect in June of this year. That's right. But here's the thing. I took a swing at it. Not once, but twice. I did a rant video and a podcast topic on it. Ironically, it was the same audio, but you get to listen to it for a third time. Third time's always a charm. So this is one of my favorite topics, though, from this year so far, was my take on eBay and their new policy regarding adult material. <laughs> All right, so this is definitely a weird one. So eBay has announced uh, new restrictions once again. Um, I, I don't get I, I don't get the world anymore. <laughs> I can see I can see their point with this one to a to a point though I can see their point. But eBay has announced uh, a much much new restrictions uh, going into effect on June fifteenth for those people that sell stuff that they deem adult only, like in their adult only section. And they sent this notice out to sellers. Um, back, I want to say, around the 17th. So, about a month. They're giving them about 30 days. Uh, which, yeah, okay, that's plenty of time for them to uh, basically figure out and refigure their shit. Yeah, 30 days. Way to go. W way to go, eBay. <laughs> way to go. Uh, but yeah, so this one definitely screams idiocy to me on, on the highest degree. Uh, but they announced in a notice sent out to sellers... Listing items on its adult-only section. Oh, so this was on this was on Friday. So this was like last Friday, then I guess. Uh, uh yeah, it would have been last Friday. Um, that the adult-only category will no longer be available for new listings as of June fifteenth. Uh, in addition, the company will forbid the sale of items showing sexual activity, sexual content, or sexually suggestive poses on its website effective June 15th. Now, I, I know out there you're asking, Andrew, why are you fucking talking about this? Ah, let me explain. Because the website's new policy details the items that will no longer be allowed for sale on its site. And you're wondering why this is on AnimeNewsNetwork.com. <laughs> this is not good. Um... And it states that sexually explicit anime, comics, books, films, animation, manga, hentai, and yaoi, uh, as well as adult films and video games with a rating of X, triple X, R, R, R18, or unrated for adult-only audiences, and adult anime slash manga that includes sexually explicit content, nudity, or sexual stories are <coughs> prohibited. So, when you go on eBay's actual page, which, by the way, uh, there is a link to that, too, uh, in the description, if you want to read uh, their entire string of bullshit with this. Because, once again, I, I kind of feel like they're just poking, they're literally just poking the bear at anime fans again, and it's the same bullshit that Amazon pulls. I, I would have said pulled, but they're still doing it. This is the same shit that Amazon pulls, the same shit that PayPal was pulling, and uh, this is basically the same argument that I have had every single goddamn fucking time somebody makes an assumption that, oh, you like anime, that means you watch porn, or, oh, you're watching this show, well, that means you're a pedophile. Yeah, th th that, this is literally the crap that us anime fans have to go through. I am not even shitting you. This is the shit we have to go through on a magnitude of a basis here. So, according to eBay's actual uh, help policies, customer service, adult item policy page, literally, this is exactly what comes up when you go in. 
Uh, it's literally basically defined as the last thing. Uh, eBay defines nudity, though, because you're not allowed to show anything with any nudity or anything like that. Uh, they'll review the content of the listing, images, and categories of the item to determine if it's allowed. So basically, YouTube is becoming judge, jury, and executioner on this one. Uh, you don't have a say in it. eBay defines nudity as showing any part of male or female genitalia, anus, or female breasts where the areola or nipple is visible. The following are also considered nudity. Get ready for this one, folks. Modeled clothing that is see-through or very tight and shows human genitalia, the anus, or the nipple slash areola of female breasts. Male erections, even if the model is clothed. People engaged in sexual contact or activity. Now, the third one, definitely, that, that is the literal definition of nudity. Okay, bingo, right there. That is the literal definition. Uh, save for the fact that you can engage in this stuff clothed. I'm 31, folks. Uh, I've been around the block at least once. Um, have I ever had sex? No, but I can. I have seen people bumping and grinding in a parking lot fully clothed. Believe me, you've seen a lot, especially when you have to work third shift during the holidays. <laughs> you and your coworkers are watching. <laughs> I swear to God, this, this actually happened. My first year at work, we're literally, we're waiting as the trucks drop and stuff off. We're watching these two people over by this car in the parking lot. They were there. I got to work early that night because I didn't know about traffic. And I'm sitting in the parking lot and I'm like, what the hell is going on over here with these two people in this car? And when we're all starting to work, we're waiting for the truck to drop off. And I'm like, oh yeah, they've been there since like 9 o'clock or like 9.30. <laughs> and it's like, doing what? And I'm like, that? <laughs> and we're just literally trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And that was like at midnight, and they were still going at it. Uh, in the parking lot. So, yeah, and it was fully clothed and in the parking lot. So, yeah, there's that. Um, however, what bothers me about their definition, okay? that th This is also considered nudity. Okay. Uh Engaging in sexual contacts or activity, yeah, because the majority of people will do that naked, so that would be considered nudity, except for the fact that you could do that fully clothed, so I would not consider that nudity, it's just, eh, define it as you will, that, that's, that's the best I can say, define it as you will, but apparently, God forbid if a male pops a chubby. So, so it's like all of a sudden, hey, you know, it's a cold, uh, it, it's like a cold studio, and the model is like, oh, hey, look, there's a girl over there, and she's watching me, that's kind of cute. Oh, you popped the chubby, great, we can't put this up on eBay now, you, you just ruined the entire photo shoot, damn it. Or, uh, modeled clothing that is see-through, that one I could understand. Or very tight and shows human genitalia, the anus, or the... Yeah, th there... First of all, I, I want to stress this one here, okay? Uh, that shows the nipple slash areola of the female breast. I remember watching uh, Stacked. It was a Pamela Anderson show on Fox. She worked at a bookstore with the two brothers. And there was an entire bonus feature in the complete series. Uh, you look, go to the bonus feature. It was called Nipplegate. And... The wardrobe designer was literally explaining to every audience member watching this bonus feature, this is a problem that you have when you have people and they are around like cold air and it's a you know an air conditioned building, especially in the middle of summer. And you're filming for six, seven, eight hours, and they're pumping up the air conditioning to keep the lights from overheating, to keep the cameras from overheating, and, you know, the actors in that have to deal with this. You're going to see, you know, as, to put it as bluntly as the, uh, <laughs> as uh, Andy Dick's character in um, Employee of the Month put it, doink, doink, turkey's done. That's, that's basically the best way I can. <laughs> That's the best way I can work that. I'm, all... <laughs> I'm sorry if that made people laugh, but that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> so, so that shit happens, okay? That can happen in air conditioning. So basically, that goes right back to like the male popping a chubby. Only in this case, you know, instead of doink, it's doink, doink. Yeah, so that falls over. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I, I can watch that movie again. <laughs> Uh, so, what uh, basically is allowed then? So, eBay... Oh, I hope that didn't... Okay, okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to like reload it or something because I was giving me a hard time getting it to load the last time. So, eBay clarified, though, that artwork uh, depicting nudity are an exception and that sellers may relist such items under the website's art and collectible section as long as they do not contain sexually suggestive poses. Uh, similarly... Sex toys and sex accessories are still permitted. Um, eBay! Question! Oh, great teacher of the uh, internet, eBay. Uh, question here. Last time I checked, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it's been a while since I've been inside of a Spencer's. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the toys uh, that are usually for the fairer sex uh, are usually shaped sort of like, you know, a certain genitalia that you do not wish to have seen. So what exactly? Yeah, um... Huh? But apparently, though, it's provided, though, that the products do not include images of nudity or sexual content. So, let me stress this one again. So, apparently, uh, sex toys and sex accessories are still permitted on eBay under this new policy. Provided the products do not include images of what they're designed for. Okay, sure, whatever. And, um... I don't see this backfiring at all. I don't see this backfiring at all. Seriously, no. This couldn't possibly backfire in any essence here. By the way, that's sarcasm for those of you that don't understand what I'm getting at here. That's fucking sarcasm. Uh, this is gonna backfire like crazy. This is literally a powder keg waiting to go off. Uh, the new policy also makes a specific exception for the Playboy, Playgirl, Mayfair, and Penthouse magazines uh, in the magazine category of the site as long as the listing does not contain nude images or explicit content. Well, uh, Playboy is clear with that because they got rid of the nudity in that and the magazine went downhill fast. So we all know how that song and dance went. Uh, I don't know about the other ones. And I've actually read a penthouse. I got one for my friend for his birthday, or I think it was for either his birthday or Easter the one, the one year, and I told him, yeah, I said, this is the most boring magazine I've ever read in my life. And he looks at me and he goes, you actually read this? I said, yes! I'm like, dear God, it sucked so bad. It wasn't funny. And I'm like, here you go. Happy Easter. And it was Easter. I was like, here, here, here. Happy Easter. He's like, oh, thanks, dude. I'm like, yeah, it's the most boring piece of crap I've ever read in my life. I was reading in the parking lot while I was waiting for you. And I stuck it back in the envelope and gave it to him. I was, I'm just that type of person. Uh, anyway, though. Uh, sellers will be able to relist the items that were in the adult-only category that do not go against its new regulations in other categories. However, items containing nudity or depicting sexual activity are no longer allowed on the website. And like I said, I already explained uh, their definition of nudity. Uh, their definition of nudity kind of reminds me of uh, Helen Lovejoy's definition of nudity. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, eBay also explained the reasoning behind this new policy. <laughs> oh yeah, th this 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 is the part that I love. So if you thought none of this was funny beforehand, where do you hear this? <clears throat> we want to make adult items available to those who wish to purchase them and can do so legally, while preventing those who do not wish to view or purchase these items from easily accessing them. Last time I checked eBay. You have to authorize verification in order to access the adult-only site. Because when I was looking for something, honest to God, I was looking for an anime title. And one of those, this item is adult, you know, click here to verify. I had to verify half a dozen things in order to even see it. And it wasn't even what I was looking for in the first place. It was miscategorized. Literally, it was miscategorized. And I even said that to him. But I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Um, and now eBay's like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. This is just, you know, 
We want to make sure that the youth are protected. So again, Helen Lovejoy, somebody please think of the children. Yeah, I'm thinking of the children in this case. Um, first off, I'm thinking of the children. A majority of the children are probably using their parents' eBay accounts. The parents are going to, and I'm going to swear to God this one, the parents are probably looking this stuff up and the kids are going to see it that way. If the kids are intelligent enough to look this up, they're intelligent enough to make their way around the security systems. You just need to build a better mousetrap. It's not the concept of, oh, here, we're just going to remove the cheese and think that the mouse is just going to go away. No, you got to build a better mouse trap. Uh, put in, like, a text verification code. Put in a, uh, like, okay, they have an account. They have to, like, give you the information, like, you know, date of birth and all that stuff. Then you'd send them a text. There's a code. That code, you know, allows them access to that information and there's your fucking solution because then you'll have the information okay granted well what if they fake that four point verification people four point verification but in recent years though this is just the tip of the iceberg because like i said so many other things here have gone on uh you had uh, you had Tumblr banning adult content back in December of 2018. Instagram updated its term. It's a TOS and TOU uh, in December of 2020 to disallow sex workers to advertise on the platform, which thank you for that one. Uh, back in 2019, PayPal dropped support of payments to pornographic content creators uh, back on Pornhub, but then Pornhub went downhill anyway. Uh, they got themselves screwed in a holy, holy mess. And Patreon began suspending accounts from some adult content creators in 2018. Uh, if I remember correctly, though, that was expanding um, either last year or this coming year. It's supposed to expand to all adult content creators. Like, if you even make, like, l let's say you're a writer and you're on DeviantArt or something. And you're writing, like, uh, those erotica novels that you would pick up at a fucking uh, grocery store supermarket. Patreon would ban your ass. They're suspending your account permanently. That that was supposed to extend because I remember when I was still when I was still debating Patreon yet, uh, I'd signed up for a newsletter because there was something on there that I could sign up for a newsletter. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll tell. I'll sign up for a newsletter, and they were saying about how they were going to be extending that into. Uh, either 2020 or 2021, I don't remember. But yeah, so that was going to get extended. But so what um, exactly does this, <laughs> this policy, this is the best. So uh, <laughs> I love this. So the following items are not allowed anymore. Uh, adult items with content that is illegal. Well, no shit. Items that do not comply with our illegal explicit content policy or IECP. Sexually oriented material, including items containing nudity and displays of sexual activity, are not allowed. This includes the following. Uh, sexually explicit adult films with the ratings of X, triple X, and unrated. Sexually explicit video games with a rating of R18, of adults only 18+, plus, which would be a lot of anime um, games from Japan. Some of those do get a little, R, do get a little AO. Uh, sexually explicit anime, comics, books, animation, manga, hentai, and yaoi. This is where I kind of get my um, underwear in a twist here with this one. Because that line right there, sexually explicit anime, comics, books, animation, manga, hentai, yaoi. Have you ever recently, eBay, seen an anime? There's an entire Ichi genre of anime. So you're basically saying all Ichi series are banned. Um, last time I checked, Wonder Woman does have boobs. Okay? I'm pretty, I'm almost certain of that. And I'm pretty sure from time to time, you might see Wonder Woman's nipples. Okay? They might pop up in the costume. Just like a small little outline in, the, like, the way she's moving or something. So, that's not allowed now. Uh, books. So, basically, there goes your supermarket erotica that was being sold on eBay. Uh, animation. Um... So basically any cartoon. Uh, manga. Again, there's an entire Ichi series, so they're all banned. Hentai. Well, no shit. Hentai is literally the animation of porn. 
And Yowie was what uh, I think broke the uh, Anime Corner store as I get their newsletter every week. That's what broke uh, oh. one person. Like, why Yowie specifically? <laughs> why have that one specifically on this list? It's Yowie. Uh, but yeah, and it's just... <sighs> I don't know. And then they have, like I said, the uh, items that are allowed under certain circumstances. You have art, uh, collectibles, paper, pinups, vintage, pre-1970. They can be listed. Say, so any uh, nude art listings that do not contain sexually suggested poses or acts are allowed, but they must be included in one of these following categories. Art. Uh, art categories. Collectibles, papers, pinups, vintage pre-1970. Uh, collectibles, postcards, risque. Uh, collectibles, pornographic images, risque, vintage, and antique pre-1940. So basically anything past 1970 is not allowed. Anything... Uh, vintage or antique past 1940 is not allowed. Uh, like I said, I don't see this possibly ending badly for you. No, I see this ending horribly for you. Uh, I see this backfiring tremendously. <laughs> this is the best, uh, though, because I know this, I knew this was going to be like a long topic. Oh, yeah, it's almost 20 minutes. I knew this was going to be a long topic. Um, items in the adult-only collectibles and art may be listed outside the adult-only category only if they do not contain displays of, of sexual activity and following the guidelines and all that other fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Items uh, on the following in the following categories are no longer permitted on eBay. And all of them are sexually explicit. You have adult-only DVDs and movies. Well, no shit. Adult-only magazines. No shit. Adult-only video games. No shit. Adult-only domain names. When the fuck did eBay start selling domain names? Uh, that, that's a new one to me. That is a new one. I don't remember ever being able to go on eBay and buy a domain name. Um, that's new. Um, other adult only stuff. Uh, adult only collectibles on Blu-ray, DVD, film, Laserdisc, VHS, other adult movie formats, VCD, SVCD, VHS, non-US, PAL. Why don't you just include Beta 2 on this while you're at it? Oh, sorry. That would be non-VHS, I guess. This is, this is written, this honest to God seems like it's written by somebody that doesn't understand either how eBay works or Categories or anything involved in this site. Uh, and this is the best part, though. Um, items in adult-only sex toys, accessories, clothing, jewelry, books, and music categories may be relisted if they do not show nudity or the uh, sexual activity and must follow the following guidelines. Uh, images showing nudity or sexual activity must be removed. Okay. Items are listed in the next most appropriate category and follow guidelines for that category. So health and beauty care, uh, health care, sexual wellness, uh, clothing, shoes and accessories, specialty, erotic clothing. But now wait a minute, eBay. Doesn't erotic clothing violate your new terms of service with this? Because you would be able to see possible chubbies and, you know, the doink doinks. Um, what the hell here, eBay? That, that, that You're contradicting yourself. Um, jewelry, watches, fashion jewelry. Oh, sure, okay, um, books and magazines would be books and music. I, I, I want to know what the hell they call it. I, I want to understand something here, and please, please somebody help me figure this out. What the hell do you qualify as sexual music? Would somebody please explain this one to me? I don't, what the hell qualifies as that? Was that music you would hear at a strip club? Well, if that's the case, Jesus, Daft Punk would be banned now because my one friend said it sounds like music from a strip club. So, what the hell? E eBay, your policy's not making any goddamn sense. <laughs> Uh, activity that doesn't follow eBay policies could result in a range of actions, including, for example, but not uh, indicative to, administratively ending or canceling listings. So basically, they will just yank your listing out and tell you kiss off. Hiding or demoting all listings from search results, which is basically the same thing. Lowering seller rating. Ooh. Buying and selling restrictions. That could actually hurt. And account suspension. Why not just cut out the middleman and just ban their ass? 
Just basically go, look, you put any of this stuff up on our site, you're automatically out. No questions asked. We are now going to be a pure site of goodness. <laughs> it was just... I am so... I have all fees paid and payable in relation to listing accounts or accounts of which would take actions will not be refunded or otherwise credited to your account. So basically, if they yank your listings, uh, you're still out the money. And if anything's sold and you owe them money, you still have to pay them. And on top of that, they'll suspend, you possibly suspend your ass. So, basically, uh, if you're an anime person, you're going to have to be very careful now putting up your freaking anime stuff. Because according to eBay's new policy, uh, any sexually explicit anime, comics, books, animation, manga, hentai, and yaoi, effective June 15th, cannot be on their site. Uh, so basically, why don't you just tell everybody, look, no Ichi anime, um, no fan service anime. Better yet, just don't put up any anime at all on our site. We don't want any anime on eBay whatsoever. Get that shit off our site. Uh, get all your figurines off. Uh, get all the comic books off. Uh, get all your books off. All, just, everything that's on this list, take it all off our site. There goes 90% of your categories. Uh, while eBay is used by a lot of people to buy, like, toothpaste and underwear... Oh, well, so, forget it! You wouldn't even be able to buy underwear, according to this, because, you know... The person in the model modeling the underwear might possibly pop a chubby. Oh my god, that's it. Male underwear, you can't do that. Uh, female underwear. Oh no, wait a minute, that's sexually explicit. No, 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 that can't even be on there. So you can't buy underwear anymore, so no more clothing, neither. So there goes all your clothes. There goes all your, you know, intimates. This policy is basically going to kill you in 30 seconds or less. Take a real good look at this, eBay. See how this is worded. And take a real hard look at this and go, this is going to fuck us over, isn't it? Yes, it's going to fuck you hard. And you just don't realize how badly yet. And that's the thing that I'm getting the kick out of. You don't know how bad you're screwed. Um, I mean, I can understand this to a point. But again, you're picking on anime fans. And that's what's pissing me off with this. I mean, based on your criteria... For what you consider nudity, that would pretty much take out a majority of your products. Uh, very tight or see-through clothing. That's it for 90% of, of the clothes. That's it. They're done. Because if the model is like, let, let's say that, um, you know... A lady, like a woman's looking for like some clothing or something on eBay. And let's say the model's in the studio and it's cold. Doink, doink. Hey, that's it. It's been on eBay. Uh, let's say I don't want to buy some underwear on eBay. Oh, God. Look, the, the guy sporting the underwear, the model for the underwear popped the chubby in the picture. Oh, it's banned. There goes clothing. There goes uh, intimate apparel. Uh, you're already pissing off anime face. Why don't you just ban anime from, e from eBay and be done with it? Just ban anime. Ban all anime. Ban comics. Ban comic books. Ban anime. This is another thing that pisses me off. It's comics and then books, too. Uh, I can understand books. Okay, so your, supermodic, your supermarket erotica can't be put up on eBay anymore. Fine. That's gone. Uh, comics. They're gone. Manga. They're gone. Anime. They're gone. Hentai, I can understand. Um, animation throws me for a fucking loop. And Yowie, why that one specifically? I, I have to agree, why that one? Just ban all anime while you're at it. Just go, look, oh, because this is literally going back to the guideline, once again, of everybody thinking that anime is porn. It's not. I had to argue this in fucking high school. I had to argue this in tech school. I am arguing this to this goddamn day. God! So going forward, I guess I got to be really careful putting up my shit on eBay. Because now, this is my question. Now, what about trading cards, eBay? Because uh, I sell Yu-Gi-Oh! and I got some Magic the Gathering cards. Some of those you might consider risky. Or they might qualify under your nudity policy. Did you ever consider that? So then there goes trading cards! Yay! You're just eliminating category after category. And all of a sudden you're going to see... Hey, how come our sales dried up like crazy the last couple? Oh, wow, we really lost a lot of people, didn't we? Yeah, you lost a lot. 
Uh, but yeah, if you want to read this for yourself, go for it. Uh, links are in the description. It makes no fucking sense to me. If somebody out there uh, can translate this BS to me, uh, I, I would appreciate a BS translator because this bullshit makes no fucking sense to me. Uh, the way I'm reading it is, uh, don't put your anime up on eBay anymore. Don't put your manga up on eBay anymore. Don't put your, well, hentai, I, I, I understand the hentai. Uh, don't put your comics up on eBay anymore. Don't put your books up on eBay anymore. Don't put your clothing up on eBay anymore. Don't put anything up on eBay anymore that we consider nudity, which is pretty much everything. So, eBay's gone pure. Okay. Well, I guess that means I'm done on eBay then, huh? They might ban trading cards next. Oh, well. That was fun while it lasted, I guess. I am a fan of Godzilla. All right, let me rephrase that. I'm a fan of Mecha Godzilla, and no, not that crappy abomination from Godzilla vs Kong, and not that god awful one either back from the '50s. No, no, no. I'm talking about the good Mecha Godzilla. But of course, Mecha Godzilla wouldn't exist. That's right, the Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla in Tokyo SOS version wouldn't exist if not for Godzilla. So how did I feel when the King of the Monsters became the King of the Floor Mops? I felt sad for it. <laughs> I, felt, I felt sad for it. I really did. That's right. I felt sad for it because Godzilla became a floor mop and it just felt so horrible. It really, really did. All right, that's bonus, bonus topic, topic of, of the week, 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 week. Holy shit, I actually have a bonus topic this week. Yes, because believe it or not, do you have trouble mopping at home? Have you always, and I mean always, wanted to have the king of the monsters bow to your sorry ass and wipe your floor that you stepped on? Well... If you've answered yes to any of these questions and you still believe that Godzilla would have whooped Kong's ass because that was bullshit that they bring Mechagodzilla into that nightmare and make Mechagodzilla the villain. Mechagodzilla isn't a villain except for the one movie, but he was controlled by aliens, so that really doesn't count. Mechagodzilla is a hero, not a villain! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Anyway... Godzilla went on a rampage and does damage, as we all know. He is the terror of Tokyo! Basically, the menace of Japan, it is Godzilla, the king of the monsters! All hail Godzilla! All hail Godzilla! All hail Godzilla! All hail Godzilla! And in the other corner is any monster that we don't want to go up against it. Rodan, King Ghidorah, Kong, I don't care. They're gonna lose to the mighty and powerful Godzilla! Well, now you can have Godzilla sweeping your floors, apparently. And I, I'm not gonna lie, this is the ugliest thing I have ever seen in my life. I, I wish I could put the picture up to show everyone how ugly this looks. But you have to pull up the article to look for yourself while I'm talking. I'm sorry, but it's true. Because I don't want to get copyright struck and sued. But anyway, you slice it. This is the ugliest thing ever. This is the ugliest Godzilla I have seen since that abomination in the um, 1998 movie with Matthew Broderick. And that just slightly pales in comparison to that horrible Godzilla movie with Brian Cranston. So... You can now have Shin Godzilla's second form floor wiper cover. Just what you needed to help you clean. Based on the second form of Godzilla from the 2016's Godzilla Resurgence, uh, it can be attached to the top of a mop. So, let me just clarify this. I can have Godzilla, the king of the monsters, atomic breath, tail wiping, just takes my ass out in a heartbeat, king of the monsters, and it is now basically going to be my bitch. I can make Godzilla my bitch. It has to clean my floor. Did I get that correct? I, I just want to clarify that I have that right. I can make Godzilla my bitch. 
Yeah, I see that ending well. It's almost as bad as when Crash Test Dummies will once again, you know, will rise and take over. We're all screwed. That is the one thing I fear in life is that mannequins and crash test dummies will someday gain sentience and they will enact their revenge upon us. For all the shit we have done to them, mannequins, for us putting them on display in stupid outfits and in awful poses and positions, and crash test dummies for, well, obviously, for very good reasons. And you can look at them and go, wait, you saved so many lives! If it wasn't for you taking the impact, millions of people would have died! We lost so many people to that. You will pay! Oh, well, we're screwed. Yeah, that would be the end of that. It would be, I guarantee they'd almost be like the board. They'll just assimilate our asses. They'll just assimilate us. They'd be like, we are the dummies. You will be assimilated. Don't even try to escape. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off topic. So while Godzilla doesn't actually do any cleaning on the mob, uh, it's a form of entertainment to make cleaning... More amusing by having a monster rushing across your floor. You know what would be more amusing? Um, you just do it and just not make a cutesy thing to cover your mop. It's a mop! It, it's, you're not supposed to do anything to it. Oh, it's a Godzilla thing! I have Godzilla wiping my floor! No, no, oh my god, you, no. I oh my god, no. <laughs> this is just so weird and wrong. <laughs> However, if you're interested in it, though, it can be bought on the Bandai website for a mere uh, 5,280 yen each. A little under 50 bucks, actually. And Bandai does ship to some other countries besides Japan, so that is a good sign. Still, though, I don't want this anywhere near me! <laughs> this thing just looks so wrong! I mean... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I finally see where the stick is. I'm kind of glad it isn't coming out of Godzilla's ass. <laughs> Although, in all honesty, for what they've done to him, <laughs> it should just go right out of its ass. <laughs> this is horrible looking and real. This is god awful. I feel. I feel so sorry for it. I really do. It's like, oh, this is Godzilla in its worst form ever. <laughs> the look on its face is just begging you to put it out of its misery. It's like, please, please kill me. It's the look it has on its face. You, you can see the sadness in its fakely painted colored eye. It's like, please end this nightmare. There's a pole so close to my ass. It's just so painful. It's, it's painful to look at this. It really is. It's like one of those Sarah McLaughlin uh, commercials. You just feel, you just kind of like hear, hear that stupid in the arms of an angel song. And you're looking at this thing and like, yo, you can help prevent this from happening by buying this cover and burning it in effigy. Just letting it die. It's I mean, okay, it's supposed to be like a cute, stupid gimmick, and I've said it multiple times at work, stupid cells, but this is freaking stupid to a whole new level that I don't even want to comprehend or fathom. This is putting stupid on a massive pedestal and saying, hey, not only is this dumb, but I think this is dumb with style. This is dumb with idiocy in style, and I just can't comprehend who in the hell would buy this? I mean, it's sad. I mean, you did, just look at its eye. Look at the picture. It looks like it's in pain. It has a freaking broom handle coming out of its back. This is painful. I, I almost feel like starting to say it. I said it's almost like a Sarah McLaughlin commercial. It's like... You know, hi, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and every year Godzilla is abused and mistreated, and this is no different, as we now see this horrible, horrible rendition. Only you can help purchase this item and put it out of its misery, so no one else will ever, ever have to endure this pain that Godzilla is enduring. <laughs> it hurts to look at it, it really does, I feel so sorry for it.
said that. Oh, God. Oh, yes. But unfortunately, that's sweet. It's only in second form, but... I, I just see this with, like, maybe a mascot or a character that, you know, might want to scurry on the floor. This is Godzilla, for God's sake! I mean, come on! You, you wouldn't see them doing this to Pikachu! Oh, God, I can see them doing this to Pikachu. That, I mean, do this to Mario! Do this to Yoshi! Um, there's so many other characters you could pick other than God. Do this to Kong. Have Kong do this. That's, yeah, it's just supposed to entertain you while you, you know, how many people actually look at the goddamn mop while they're mopping? I don't even do that at work. I look ahead. I look around. I don't look at the damn mop. I don't sit there and look at the mop and go, that's a really nice looking mop. Yeah. You know what this could use? A cover to go on top of it so that when I mop the floor, I have something to keep me company. That's dead. <laughs> I feel so I feel so sad for it. it. It hurts to look at it. It's like Godzilla is just begging you to put it out of its misery. It's like, please, please, it hurts. I feel, I feel so sorry for it. I really do. It's like, it, it, it's an agony. It just wants to be put out of its misery. It's like, please, please make it stop. I don't want this anymore. They told me I would get on to Shrek 2 or something, and this is what I am reduced to. They promised me a new movie, and I get this. It's like, it's just horrible. Oh, yeah, this is, that That was just painful. To, that was just painful to look at in general. Oh, my God, that was just, that was painful. Smartphones are all around us. I mean, everybody supposedly has one. I don't. I still have a regular phone. I wish people would stop assuming that I have a smartphone, because I don't. I'll probably end up having to get one soon because apparently my where I have my phone through, which is track phone, is kind of pushing people towards that. So I'll probably have to get one. But for the time being and until I'm forced to, I'll keep my phone. It still sends texts, it still takes calls, and it still functions for what a phone is. But aside from that, with smartphones came the advent of mobile gaming. Of course, with mobile gaming, there's always an edge. Never thought one being that you having to use the bathroom, though. Yes, from all the way back in 2020, here once again to confuse the hell out of us is the Poop Smartphone app. The game that allows you to fight digestive bacteria and gain power-ups based on the color and shape of your shit. I can't tell you how much fun this one was. <laughs> really, this I, I was laughing. I actually had to stop laughing, so I actually had to pause the recording at one point, I'm pretty sure, because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Can't tell you how funny this is. But once again, take a listen to one of my favorite topics, the Poop Smartphone app. Alrighty, before I get into this topic, I just want to say the following phrase here. Um, please do not eat or drink anything uh, until this topic is concluded. The reason I'm saying this is because I don't want uh, to be blamed for anybody accidentally choking to death or snorting their drink through their nose. You've been warned. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So, smart devices have basically uh, taken over our entire lives. You have smart watches, smart shoes, smart underwear. Hell, I guarantee you somewhere out there, there is a smart thong. That is just waiting to be worn by somebody and tell them how wonderful they are. We probably have smart perfume with small nanites in it that will basically tell us how warm our body is and it'll beam the information directly to our phone. Or even better yet, there's a smart bed that will gently cradle us as we sleep, rocking us to sleep as it sings us a lullaby. Actually, that does sound nice. But anyway... Smart technology is basically doing everything. So, why is it then that nothing can surprise me? Now, before I get into this, I thought my Sailor Moon condom topic that I had 
was the most funniest thing I had ever seen. I still stand by that. The condom packet's freaking winking at me, telling me to promote safe sex, and it's Sailor Moon winking at me like, you can do this. No, that, that, turned, that, that would turn me off, basically. This topic, however, is a very close second. I'm not even going to lie. This is a close second. So, <clears throat> how would you like to play a smartphone game where you can earn points just for taking a shit? I actually mean that. You can literally earn points for taking a poop. Now, for those of you out there that are freaking out going, what the hell? Hold on. Hold on. Let me explain. So Japan outdoes itself again. The latest Japanese invention to leave us gasping is a smartphone app that combines gaming with digestive health. The app is called Unkoli, which combines unko, a Japanese word that translates to poop, with collection. So obviously we've all become Lisa from the Loud House over there. Okay, here we go. So this is basically how it works. Uh, you do your business. You know, you basically go into the bathroom. You take something with you. Like, uh, most people take, like, a newspaper, a book, a video game, like a handheld game or something. They'll drag that in there with them. And you go in there, and you basically take the Browns to the Super Bowl. There you go. You know, a place that they haven't been to in ages. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm horrible. <laughs> I was, I was sorry, that was bad. Uh, yeah, so you do your business, then open up the app. And you choose the color and shape that best describes your creation. <laughs> Based upon the Bristol stool scale. I'm not making any of this up, by the way. This is honest to God in this. <laughs> I love this. The app informs you how healthy your guts are. You can then use the power of microbes to fight baddies in RPG-style action. The game, which is subtitled A Colon Bactilius as Healthy Life in English, builds itself as an anthropomorphic gut flora game and features lots of cute characters to help you battle and improve your digestive health. The game created uh, as a way for doctors specializing in stool to get their message out to folks in a fun, informative way. It's currently out, though the number of users is limited while the team builds out and tests it. So, yeah, okay. And they have a picture here of what it looks like. Um... So basically, you can choose the color that, base, that that best describes how it looks. And then they have different shapes that best describes that. And then you can basically use those points, the way that this is saying it, it'll give you points. And you can use those to purchase characters, I'm assuming probably level them up in a way, and then take on baddies in an RPG-style game. So now, uh, when you're in the bathroom... And, you know, your mom's banging on the door, grandma's banging on the door, anybody's banging on the damn door, and they think you're in there spanking it, or they think you're in there, you know, making yourself feel good and not in the, oh, I'm just cleansing my colon kind of way. <laughs> now, you basically can go, no, 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 I'm in here leveling up. I need to earn some points for my RPG characters. I mean, what's next? All of a sudden, it's like, man, I really got to get, like, 150 points to earn this character. I can get that if I have this color crap with this shape. How am I going to do this? I know. I'll just eat this certain food for a couple weeks. That'll work. Also, I can get this one super rare character in my game for my phone. All because I want to have a healthy colon and because I want to beat this boss that I've been getting my ass whipped on for the last six freaking weeks. It sucks when I go into the bathroom and I try getting some new points and I don't get enough to get this character. I don't have enough time to wait around with my greenish looking crap that looks like something that popped out of the dog's ass in the backyard. No, I don't have time for this. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not making this up. <laughs> This is by far the stupidest thing I have ever seen coming out of Japan. 
like I said, I thought the Sailor Moon condom was good. Okay, I honestly got I thought the Sailor Moon condom was the best thing in the world that I could ever laugh at. This, this by far takes the cake. I mean, I can just see this now. 200 points, probably, and you can unlock this character. Could you just imagine the wonderful time kids and people will have talking about this with their friends? Well, yeah, I've been playing this new RPG game on my phone. You know what's really great about it? I can figure out and get points just by the color of my crap and its shape in the toilet bowl after I have a beefy burrito. Or, or better yet, you know, I had a lot of weird food the last couple of months, and man, I just didn't feel good. Played this new game while I'm sitting on the toilet, dropping it like, you know, pinching a loaf off here. And, oh, man. Whew. Besides the fact that it blew up my bathroom, man, my toilet reeked for weeks. I got 5,000 points. I was able to get myself this ultra rare character for my game. You know, this thing is cool. I can one hit KO anything now. There, there is no, there is no, could you imagine a PR department trying to put a positive spin on this? Well, your digestive health is important to us. Play this game and earn points while taking the shit. You too can have this wonderful game. All you have to do is download it. We have limited numbers of them. And then basically tell us the color, which works really well for somebody that's colorblind and the shape. And then we'll tell you how healthy you are. But hey, as a consolation prize, you'll get points that you can use to get RPG-style action done in the good old RPG-style game. <laughs> so, I mean, that's going to give a whole new meaning to, well, Timmy's been in the bathroom for the last four hours. I wonder what he's doing in there. Man, I keep leveling up my characters left and right now. Man, this new poop app RPG's the best! <laughs> I, I, this has got to be by far the stupidest thing that's ever come out of Japan. But my God. And then on here, there's a, there's a screenshot. And the screenshot at the bottom of it has what appears to be, I'm assuming, an angel. I, I'm guessing this is the toilet bowl angel. This is the thing that must be on all the cleaning supplies that makes sure that your toilet bowl is nice and clean. Or this is the Digestive Health Fairy. I, I don't know which. But it's just there, smiley like, you know, you're playing this weird app. And I'm here because they wanted somebody to really make sure that you are okay and take care of yourself to give you a consolation prize. <laughs> the look on her face is priceless. It seriously looks like she's like, uh, I am not comfortable with this. I did not sign up for this. This is not what I agreed to be a part of. I mean, this is just, this is hilarious. This is, honest to God, this is funny as hell. I mean, I mean, for years, you had parents that were constantly terrified because their kids were in the bathroom. They figured they're spanking it in the bathroom. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to be in there RPGing themselves, gaining EXP while taking a, while taking a CRAP. That's just perfect. Never again will going to the bathroom be the same. Now we can have smart toilets and, oh, while you're at it, a poop app RPG. It's Perfect! Just fun-filled enjoyment for all around. If you're a gamer, now you can game everywhere. Public urinals, public toilets, you're in charge. All you need to do is open up this app, tell us what color and shape it is, and you'll get points. Wow! I thought that bathroom that I saw, uh, you, a video of, I think it was on YouTube or Twitter, that I saw this, ba uh, saw this like bathroom video, where... It's supposedly like a glass bathroom that when you go in, there's like a little switch and it kind of makes it like, it, it turns it into a silhouette and they can see a silhouette of you doing your business. I thought that was the weirdest thing I had ever seen. That was apparently over in Japan. I thought that was creepy as fuck. No, this, this takes the cake as the most disturbed smartphone app in history. What's next? 
Are you gonna have me count calories by using an RPG game? Oh, wait, no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. I had a bag of potato chips today. Oh, well, you're gonna lose 2,000 HP for every bag of potato chips you had. Oh, great. How big was the bag? 12 ounces. Oh, you're gonna lose a lot of HP. It'll be a 24-hour loss. But then if you'd eat carrots, all of a sudden it would be like, well, you ate extremely healthy. You're gonna gain some buffs. Unlimited health, HP regeneration, you're good. I just, I get I mean, I, I get a freaking kick out of this. And what bothers me, I think, about this is that, okay, you're going to have somebody that's going to try to make their crap a different color. Because, now I'm going to go off the colors that are here. You have puke green, uh, brown or tan, dark red or dark brownish to me, um, solid dark, a dark brown, and then what looks like a brighter red. And then white. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure I have never sat down in the toilet, plopped the load, and it looked completely solid white. I think that's the part where I would be terrified out of my mind. I'd be calling 911. Something would be wrong with me. I would need medical assistance immediately. Something would be... I, I have never heard of white crap in a toilet bowl. And it is. It does look white. Unless it's supposed to be blue, in which case that's even worse. I don't think that's a good thing. And then they got different shapes. And one of them is a banana shape. I, I'm not even joking. I'm literally looking right at this. So don't think I'm acting creepy or anything. I am literally looking right at this. And anybody out there from YouTube listening to this, the link's in the description. You can view it for yourself. I am literally describing what is in here to the best of my ability. And I'm not talking about everything. But, oh my god, they have, like, different shapes, but the one that's selected and highlighted looks like a banana. Again, I'm pretty sure I have never had that either. That, again, would be an immediate contacting of 911 emergency. God, I need a doctor now! <clears throat> I mean, it's just... Seriously, I, I have I've never heard of something so acidine in my life. It's a smartphone poop app. It'll tell you how healthy your intestines and your guts are while giving you points to use in an RPG style game where you can then gain characters, I'm assuming, possibly level up items, and you're going to take on baddies in a colon style game. It's basically a colon collector or poop collection. So, okay, I'm now a poop collector. Please tell me that your slogan isn't gotta shit them all. Because, <laughs> I, I, I know somebody out there is probably thinking it. Like, okay, what's he gonna make the Pokemon reference? Okay, there it is! Oh my, I, I, I couldn't. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think I could keep a straight face with this. Uh, and you figure, it, now just imagine if they would integrate trading into this. Oh my god! That, that would be interesting. Wow, you got the ultra rare character! Wow, that's like 50 million points to unlock! You must be healthy! Wow! This this will get right up there on the top 100 apps that gamers are just gonna wanna play the crap out of. No pun intended! <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't. This is the stupidest app I have ever heard of. I have heard some really doozies lately, too. I mean, I know of smart shoes. There's, I'm assuming, smart underwear is going to be next. Smart beds. Um, oh, my God. I I'm waiting for smart everything. But a smart toilet, smart sink, smart fridge, smart stove, smart microwave, smart TV. We already kind of have that. Smart computer. Be an ass, that'd be an oxymoron in a way. But I, I'm literally waiting for the smart, you know, something or other. But this takes the freaking cake right here. I mean, holy crap. I mean, what? Oh, God. This, oh, God. This is hilarious as all hell. Uh, I, I was looking forward to this topic all week. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, 
Nope, this is a topic. This is so a topic. I am this is a topic. This is a freaking topic. Oh man, this is worth it. It's a smartphone app that allows you to gain points while pooping. Just because you didn't think Japan was weird enough as it was with some of their stuff, this definitely takes it just a little further towards burying the needle in strange. Yep, definitely. Like I said, the Sailor Moon condom is still number one, but this is a damn close second now. <laughs> oh, man. I, I only think this is like a close second is because the Sailor Moon condom was winking at me. This is just making me feel wrong inside. <laughs> and in a whole different way, too. <laughs> oh, God. This was good. Okay, all right. You know, this is coming. The creme de la creme. The best of the best. What is my favorite topic that I have ever discussed on this podcast? Come on, you already know the answer. I know. You probably already looked. What is my all-time favorite topic? Of course. The Sailor Moon condom. This thing was put out to promote safe sex. And ironically, they... <laughs> They picked the one character from a show from a bare naked lady song that even specifies that it makes people think the wrong thing, and they're using that to help promote safe sex. Beautiful. <laughs> <coughs> I just I <laughs> think I could make this up if I tried. I don't think I could make it up if I tried. But, yes, this was my all-time favorite topic that I have ever talked about on this podcast, to the point that I actually started laughing so hard, I actually couldn't breathe. <laughs> this is how bad this topic was for me to get through. I felt like I was going to die. Was it worth it? Oh my god, yes. Was it fun? Indubitably. Would I do it again? Hell no. But it was still fun, nonetheless. So of course, without any further ado, my all-time favorite topic that I have ever talked about here on the podcast for the five-year anniversary is, of course, the Sailor Moon condom. All right, folks, so here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. That's right. It's time to talk about Sailor Moon in condom form. <laughs> I feel like I need a shower after this. I don't, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking of that song from Bare Naked Ladies, that one-week song with the second verse. Yeah, 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 because they got the boom anime babes yeah that that's i'm thinking about that holy crap it's just making me laugh so bad right now but so does the tagline in this article uh in the name of the moon i will protect you from stis oh god this is funny uh so yeah that's right the uh japan's ministry of health labor and welfare is partnering with sailor moon uh creator <laughs> no go takuchi uh, to make Sailor Moon themed condoms. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, not going to be able to keep a straight face to this one. I'm just apologizing right now. Uh, the ministry will distribute these condoms for free at STI prevention events throughout Japan in October. Uh, the design of the condom package features a heart shaped and a picture of Sailor Moon with the text prevention of STIs. Oh god, this is just this is just so damn funny. Uh, the events are going to take place. Uh, oh, sorry, the events will take place on October fifth in uh, Fukuoka. So you've already missed that one by the time I upload this. But you can go to the October fourteenth one in Hiroshima. Uh, this isn't actually the first time though that Sailor Moon has been used to increase public awareness of reproductive health. <laughs> oh God, no. Okay, this is, getting, this is getting worse here. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the same ministry ran a Sailor Moon-themed campaign to teach the public more about chlamydia, HIV, and syphilis. That's just what you want to um, establish with 
I, I'm just I'm just gonna say it this way, and I mean no harm by this, but that's just what you want to establish your uh, a brand like this with is sexually transmitted illnesses. Uh, this is Sailor Moon we're talking about here, okay? This is a magical girl genre. Uh, it's basically a Shujo series. Aired on, you know, in the U.S. Uh, Deke had it. It was on uh, Toonami for the longest time. It was a lot of people's gateway anime. Got rebooted uh, with a very crappy reboot. I'm sorry to say I didn't like the reboot. And this is what... Condoms. You know, that, that's just a wonderful thing. Uh, last time I checked... Uh, I just want to talk about this because this is like a couple articles back uh, with the decline of with it, primetime anime no longer being a thing. They were saying it was because there wasn't any new generations being made or their you know, birth rates are still falling. So you're making condoms out of anime characters, using them to promote condoms. That's just perfect. I, I, I just I, I'm sorry to say this. Yeah, this is an event. First off, I, I, thank God this is just an event. Uh, I would hate to walk into like a pharmacy or something and go, no, I want the Sailor Moon condoms, please. That, that That's just so wrong. That's just so wrong. Uh, he's, that, that's one of those, you're wearing a trench coat, uh, hat, sunglasses, and you're just dropping the money on the counter and you're going, I'll take the condoms, please, the Sailor Moon ones. And thank God these aren't being sold in stores. I, I don't think anybody would be able to handle that. That that would be horrible. But it's, I mean, I, first off, I, I think it's a great idea in on paper. I, let me phrase it. It's a great idea on paper, okay? Yeah, let's, you know, okay, we want to make this so that people don't get STIs, uh, don't want to, you know, we're going to distribute them in events. That's fine. On paper. Okay? On paper. That's fine. On paper. I want to stress that part. On paper. This is a good idea. On paper. Now, in actuality, let's think about how creepy this is for about half a microsecond before we actually go through with this. We're now basically screwing stuff in the backwoods. Okay? Honestly. It's just the fact that this is idiocy. His poor thinking. Okay, so you did this before. Uh, did you actually like give out... Uh, okay, you just used her to increase public awareness. Of you ran a campaign to teach, to teach the public about chlamydia, HIV, and syphilis. You weren't passing out Sailor Moon condoms. I want to stress that part. Sailor Moon condoms. By the light of the moon, I will protect you from sexually transmitted illnesses. <laughs> I, I mean, we're, we're stop, let's talk seriously here for a moment, if we can. Let's, let's talk seriously for a moment. Yeah. Could you... <laughs> I don't think you take this seriously. I mean, first off, like I said, this is good on paper, and you're using an anime character, which is massively popular in Japan, uh, to push awareness. It's basically a marketing ploy. But by God, is it one of those... This is like once in a lifetime. Did you think before you put this out there type of moments? I would just hate uh, to be, and I, I really mean this, I would hate to be the type of person that's uh, with somebody, uh, they want to go back and do what adults do, you know, uh, for those of you that are underage, you shouldn't be listening to my stuff anyway, but <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not family friendly, I'm like PG-13 to a, to a soft R, I I'm not G-rated. I'm not G-friendly. I'm like PG-13, like a soft, 
like a, a hard PG to a soft PG-13, low rating, hard R, high rating. <laughs> That's what I am. I, I'm flat out TVMA here. <laughs> Maybe TVY7, low M, I'm like high in TVMA. <laughs> <laughs> you have this I hated to be the person that's with somebody you decide hey I, you know let's go back to your place let's go back to my place you know we can uh get it on a bit and all of a sudden it's like well you brought protection right oh yeah I got protection I got a sailor moon condom <laughs> <laughs> I want to stress, like I said, this is good on paper. Okay, this this, this is good on paper. Uh, first off, uh, having events like this, uh, you know, you know, making it aware to the public about this type of stuff, that's a good thing to do. You don't want to have a massive outbreak of something, um, no illnesses or diseases. All that's a good thing. I, I, you're never going to hear me argue that prevention against diseases is always something that should be taken, and. For those of you out there wondering, no, I was that was drilled into my head in school. You know, always wash your hands, cover your mouth, cover your nose, all that stuff. So yeah, prevention of disease is a good idea. The fact <laughs> The fact that you're using an anime character that was depicted in a bare naked lady song about making them think the wrong thing. To make this awareness happen is what I'm finding so ironically funny. Not to mention the picture of the condom in question here, which you can easily find in the article. It looks like they just took like a patch. For like a Sailor Moon patch with the moon behind her and, you know, her and then Luna. And they just added the words prevention of STI, added the little decorative backgrounds, and placed it on a heart-shaped container. I, like I said, I would hate, hate, hate to be the person. I mean, first off, I, I'm just going to safely say this. If this would happen to me and all of a sudden be like, yeah, I have protection. I have the Sailor Moon condom. I can guarantee you. That either A, my date is going to be leaving and never coming back, or B, knowing that that's the only thing that I have, I would not be comfortable enough to even get into the situation where I'd have to bust it out to use it. So this will, I don't want to make light of this because I, what I think they're doing is a good thing. And I really don't mean to make light of this, but you have to realize my position here. This is funny as hell in a cosmic sort of way. Okay, I, I am looking this, I am looking at this from the cosmic perspective of this. This is hilarious as hell. Put yourself in my shoes, you're going to understand this. <laughs> so, <laughs> this will... Help in prevention of STIs for damn sure because I don't see any self perspective. She's winking in this, okay? She's winking, okay? <laughs> she's winking. It's almost like she's just looking at you, like, you can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> that is not to pick me up that I need. It is not the pick me up that I need for this to happen. <laughs> that is going to do the exact opposite of what the situation is calling for. The situation is calling for something to be standing at attention and seeing her winking, smiling face is not going to help matters. So all of a sudden I'm going to go, you know what, how about we just watch the TV instead? No, 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 you stay on that side of the couch. You stay on that side of the couch. It's a pillow, blanket, Rufus, doggy. You have a dog, right? 
Yeah. What's your dog's name? Fido. 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 Good Fido. You sit here. You sit in the middle. You sit in the middle. Protect your master. I'm just gonna sit all the way over here. <laughs> She's winking, for God's sake, she's winking, she's winking, okay, I cannot think, you gotta look this picture, it is in the article, pull up the article, as you're listening to this, pull up the article, click the link, pull up the article, you'll see what I mean, she's winking, she's winking, and it, and it is, it's basically like, you can do it, I don't feel comfortable. I would not feel comfortable. If I knew, I mean, for, first off, I, I just want to stress this uh, for anybody out there wondering, no, I don't think I will ever be in this situation. I couldn't get laid in a women's prison with a handful of pardons. Okay? That, that is the type of person that I am. Okay? I, I am not comfortable with that. I don't see that ever happening. My mom pretty much has, made, has been made well aware of this fact that she's probably never getting grandkids. Okay? I think she's been made well aware of this fact. But, let's say the planets go into alignment. Uh, Uranus is in Neptune's Pluto. And I was over in Japan. And I had one of these. And I basically knew that this was the only condom I had. Nope, that ain't happening. Uh, it, it will succeed in its goal of preventing STIs because I ain't getting any. I ain't even doing the act that would bring this into probability. Uh, so it has worked. It has worked as a deterrent. Just see her winking at me. <laughs> I, just, I can't stress that one enough. I'm sorry. I can't stress this enough. She's winking in the condom. The outer package has her winking. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. I, 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 like I said, I mean no disrespect. Like I said before, uh, this it sounds good on paper. And what they're doing is very wonderful. I'm not going to lie. But for God's sake, I could not see myself. Uh, this would work out wonders. Uh, for what they're attempting to get out of it. But, it, no. I, I draw the line somewhere, and this is where I draw the damn line. This is where I draw the line, okay? This is the line that's drawn in the sand. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't. This, this is, I, I'm looking at this with the cosmic sword, of, for the cosmic view, and this is just too damn funny. It, it, it is too damn funny. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this walk down memory lane along with me. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Wish I could have did this with commentary, but I'm not that good. Yet. <laughs> I'm not that good yet. No, no, I would have had to have done a lot more preparation. Maybe for the 10 year, if I make it that long. If I make it 10 years, I'll make one with commentary. Like, I'll literally do a picture-in-picture -picture sort of deal. If I make it 10 years. Because then I'll have way more that I probably talked about. It'll be interesting to see how this list stacks up to it then. But I'd still like to thank you all anyway, though, for hanging out with me while we walk down memory lane once again. Because how often do you get to do that? How often do you get to enjoy memory lane? You don't. For me, it was a lot of fun. And I hope it was for you, too. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, check out the absolutely, completely random podcast only on YouTube. There's a link to the playlist in the description. You can go check that out. And don't forget to check out the five-year anniversary podcast dropping this week. Five years. Five years! Holy crap. <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it that long. Anyway, folks, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for all your support over the years, and I hope for many more. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and... That's all I gotta say. Bye.